What is going on people, Triple M back again with another video and today I would like to talk about Arsenal as they continue to stay top of the Premier League after an emphatic and scintillating 5-0 win at the Emirates yesterday evening and the only sad thing about this performance is the fact that I couldn't actually enjoy it as a neutral because Manchester United were playing at the same time as Arsenal yesterday so I obviously had to pay more attention to the United game but I had the Arsenal game up on my second screen and, and let me tell you man, every time I glanced over they were playing some of the silkiest football I've seen them play in a few weeks because I think they've had a bit of a wobble right that Brentford result that Everton game away that game against Newcastle as well as the game against Manchester City I think there were a bit of wobbly performances from Arsenal very difficult and grueling games which is not what they're accustomed to this season because generally speaking Arsenal always have the attacking initiative and they're always able to play the play style that they want and they are dictating the tempo they are dictating the momentum and more importantly they're dictating the scoreboard and that's why they're top of the league generally speaking across the season and yesterday we saw saw that Arsenal come back. We saw that Arsenal make a statement to say, Nana, we haven't fallen off. We're still capable of playing the best fo football in the league. They have the best brand, the most palatable brand of football in the league this season. And they're backing it up by staying top of the league. They're backing it up by having the second best defense in the league. And they're backing it up by having the most dynamic front three, regardless of who starts. Because Jesus, a player who was touted to be their best attacker and a player who was touted that if he got injured, Arsenal were going to fall apart. He hasn't been involved in a while. Nketiah has showed up. Trossard has showed up. Even Martinelli, a player who I criticized and said was Arsenal's, um, probably Arsenal's worst player in their front three across the entire season. He's starting to show up now as well. And, and it's interesting because I think Martinelli has always been good, but it's just the lack of outputs that made me say the things I said about him when I said that he's not that good for me, right? Like there was just something off about him compared to Saka, compared to Nketiah, compared to Jesus, compared to Trossard now who's at Arsenal. I thought that Martinelli was the, was the worst of a really good bunch. But so far in the last month, he has been an absolute goal and assist monster for Arsenal in addition to being such a good technical footballer. Yesterday evening was one of the best performances I've seen him put in. 100% of his shots were goals yesterday. He had two shots on target, no shots off target according to Sofa Score, and both those shots were goals. He had 92% pass accuracy, 37 passes attempted, 34 successfully delivered to the recipient which would have been his teammate, obviously. He played one key pass as well and created a chance for Arsenal. So this guy was just so key in yesterday's performance against Everton. Then you look at someone like Bakayo Kusaka. Again, another player who I haven't really rated that highly because I've just never seen what the hype is about until this season. This season has completely changed my mind. This season has made me realize what a good player Bakayo Kusaka genuinely is and the levels that this kid can ascend to when he's called upon is genuinely surprising for me. I mean, as a fan of football, I'm in awe and admiration of this young man. A goal, an assist, but beyond that, just an electrifying performance and two key passes, one big chance created as well. So in total, three chances created in addition to scoring two goals and in addition to getting an assist. He's unbelievable. He's absolutely unbelievable. And the funny thing is, I, I think there's always a debate between Manchester United fans and Arsenal fans about who the better wingers are, especially in the past when Saka was still developing, right? When we still had Mason Greenwood playing at the club, it was always Greenwood versus Saka or Greenwood versus Martinelli or Rashford versus Saka. And I've never been the type of fan to get involved in that type of nonsense because I'm a football fan first. I don't have time for tribalism. So me, when I watch other teams play, I enjoy it. I'm not one of those fans that's not going to give Arsenal credit when credit is due. I'm not one of those people that's not going to give Bakio Kusaka or Martinelli or any other player for a rival team the, the necessary credit that they deserve just because I'm a Manchester United fan. It's just not in me. That's just not who I am. So I will always praise players when I think they're playing well because I can appreciate good football without necessarily forgetting that my favorite club is Manchester United. But anyways, let's talk about Jorginho because Jorginho is an unsung hero at Arsenal. Since arriving, he has confused and, and shocked a lot of people, I think. He's raised a lot of eyebrows, especially from Chelsea fans because I think they're now seeing what a good player they've lost. His performances for Arsenal have been really decent. He's playing line-breaking passes. He's, he's actually facilitating a lot of Arsenal's attacks when he's on the pitch and he's offering a different dimension to that Arsenal team that they didn't really have in abundance with Thomas Partey, I think right he is just such a different player to Thomas Partey and I think he fits Arsenal's style of play so much especially when they're playing against a team like Everton at home and all Everton's going to do is sit deep 
right, is sit deep and they need a player like Jorginho who's going to dictate the tempo of the play and really control the pace of the game, play those line-breaking passes and be a good ball distributor. Now, at Chelsea, he didn't show the side of his game that much and that was obviously because it was an instructed thing. Chelsea and Arsenal are two completely different teams with two completely different styles of play and in a, in a, in a Chelsea team where there isn't that many technical players who are quick and proficient at playing through uh, uh, tight spaces and are quick at distributing the ball up the field, obviously a player like Jorginho is going to struggle because he has teammates who don't complement his strengths and don't complement or mask his weaknesses. So obviously he's going to struggle. In addition to that, he just wasn't the type of player that Chelsea needed in that CDM role. But the level of hatred that he used to get from Chelsea fans, you'd almost swear that this guy was a bad player. And I never believed it. I never believed it. There was a point where I actually wanted Jorginho at Manchester United. Obviously, now that we've got Casemiro, uh, I'll, I'll pass. Thank you very much. But before we got Casemiro, I would have taken Jorginho as an option at Manchester United because I can see what he brings to the team. I can see the level of quality on the ball that this guy can bring to a team that plays a possession-based style of football. And I'm shocked that other people haven't seen that. Although I'm not that shocked because football fans are very biased, especially eye test merchants. Eye test merchants are some of the most annoying people to talk to about football on the internet because they pay no regard to stats, they pay no regard to tactics, and they pay no regard to any exterior context that might be needed to accurately judge a player. Instead, they just say things like, I don't need stats. I watch football with my eyes. Mur. I'm a proper football fan. I watch football fan football with my eyes, bruv. I don't need stats. Mur. It's like, bro, like when whenever people say that, I cringe so hard because I'm like, you do realize that your eyes are biased. My eyes are biased. Everyone watching this channel is biased. Therefore, if you want to get an objective opinion on a player, i.e., remove your bias and remove your personal feelings and say, you know what? Is this guy actually good? What does he bring to the team? You need stats. You also need the context of how the team play and whether or not that player's attributes suit that style of play. Then you also need other exterior uh, uh, forms of context like what teammates does this guy have? Because obviously, if you're playing in a midfield that's surrounded by good players, that's going to make you a better player. If you're playing in a midfield with bad players, that's going to make you struggle as well. Kind of like Paul Pogba when he had to play with McTominay at Manchester United. McTominay and Fred, to be fair, not just McTominay, right? Like... Obviously, those things all factor in, but eye test merchants don't really think about any of that stuff because they don't need stats. They just use their eyes. Um, anyways, I think Jorginho is a, a, a victim of this. Honestly, I think Jorginho is a victim of the eye test because stylistically, he never really looked that good at Chelsea. But actually, when you look at him at Arsenal, you start to see that actually there's a player in there and there's somebody who can actually contribute in a possession based system and in a team like Arsenal. And I think that I'm so happy for him as a player to now go play football somewhere where he'll actually be appreciated and will actually be treated fairly, uh, uh, you know, as a football player, because I've never really understood the hate towards Jorginho. But um, anyways, moving on from Jorginho, Arsenal, top of the league. They look like they're going to win the league. I made a video in November last year basically saying they're going to win the league. So I haven't really changed that opinion yet, even after the loss to Brentford, even after the loss to Everton uh, away from home, and even after the wobbly result against Manchester City. I've always maintained that I think Arsenal are going to win the league because I'm not one of these salty rivals who just refuses to give credit where credit is due. I've seen Arsenal play more than any other team apart from Manchester United this season and they are by far and beyond the best team in the Premier League and that is not an overstatement that is not hyperbolic that is not me being reactionary that is me just being real I've been saying it for nearly five months now and we're in March so if people don't believe it now I guess people will never believe it even after they lift the trophy anyways it's been your boy Triple M subscribe to the channel if you are new leave a like on the video if you want to and comment if you want to as well peace